We actually on right now. All right, you bet. Yeah, cause All right, we, cool. Because cool. we don't we, I don't we don't do any conventional intros, anything like that. It's just Got it's you. pure conversation. So it's All like right. you know, that's our viewership loves that, and that's what we want. Imagine do, we but. did that though. We had a whole like crazy. This yeah, is Wayno. I'm Eden. Where's yeah. our guest right here? Yeah, but I was about to say because his intros would be crazy just off of the episodes that y'all have with all yeah. the stuff he's talking about. I'm like, yeah. yo, it's, it's, it's bananas, unconventional. Right? You know, the thing yeah. about it is, is, like I said, it's like, you know, if, if, if the same way I, we, we connected, right. it was, you know, a mutual acquaintance and right. he's like, yo, y'all need to talk and we just spoke. That's it. So it's like, you know, I, I get why everybody else does this like that, but right. for me, that's just who I am. So I right. just try to keep the conversation going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and, um, and, and it works though. Your format works because I told I was actually watching it and <laughs> she was like, what, what are you doing? What, what, what are you watching? And I'm saying, because I'm used to watch, like, I'm always watching something political or something, right. you know, a documentary or something. And all you can hear through the house was, no, chicken and waffle. Oh, the chicken and French toast. And she's like, chicken and French toast? Like, you, you wasn't in prison that long. What changed you up there? <laughs> so what do you prefer? Uh, chicken and waffles, yeah. I chicken mean, waffles. Yeah. You a waffle guy? So waffles, French I, I, toast, or pancakes? Waffles, French toast. Is that what we're going to ask our guests every time they come through? <laughs> yeah, that's probably going to be it. You know yeah. what? I don't know because I get bu- I cook now, so I can cook. Yeah, yeah, they all good. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Don't I get busy with everything. Matter of fact, I'm, we should do a podcast with me coming up. Everybody come up and just cook. And just cook. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, right. just cook. <laughs> you should come out. Actually, you should come out to the hood. You should come out to Southeast Queens one day. Mm-hmm. We'll take care of everything. You come out there and we just do one and cook for the whole hood. You know what I'm saying? We can have a couple of chefs come out and do your oh, podcast. From be, I would dope. actually be down with that. You want to know yeah. why? Because it's like, I mean, one thing I do feel connected to is like the hood. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I was born Absolutely. and raised there. And, you know, I, like for me, I'm always trying to be, trying to use whatever celebrity people think I have right, to right. show young kids that they could do this. That's humble. You know? Yeah. He said, whatever people think I have. Some of these dudes are just like, <laughs> I'm a celebrity. And I'm like, who are you? Like, what do you mean? What have, <laughs> what have you done? Like, what have you produced? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, until, um, even with the Kardashians, I never understood the fascination behind that. But right. they're celebrities in their own right, yeah, right? Absolutely. So for you to say that, that's, that's, that's humbleness. It's I mean, humility. but you know what it is, Ruben? It's like, for me, like, when people always ask me who I am, I'm just like, I'll be like, I'm the, I'm the guy that my mother raised me to be. You know that's what I mean? It. Like that's, that, that's who I am. So yeah, it's like, it's really hard for me. Like money, nor like I was watching something on Instagram recently and a, a artist, Mr. Fab, he's from Oakland, mm. from Bay Area, legendary guy. That's and okay. he was talking about how, how he was built. He was like, my grandmother didn't allow elbows on the table. Yeah. Like my grandmother didn't allow elbows on the table. Mm. She didn't allow um, hats in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, Still to this day, I'm 38 years old. My mother's friends, I call them Mr. or Miss. Right, absolutely. I don't call no adult all, older than me. That's my name. mom's friend by their first name because I, allow- I wasn't allowed to when my mom was talking to somebody to be standing there and looking and be like, well, you know what I think? Like, right. I wasn't allowed. And it right. wasn't, I don't think, that a lot of people boil it down to like, um, what is it, disciplining? Absolutely. And I don't think it's just a discipline thing. It's just a respect thing. Like, Absolutely. You know, children have Absolutely. to know their places because one day you'll be an adult and children should know every single thing that's going on. Nowadays, they seem like they do. It's more, right. it's more friends and parents. So Absolutely. that's totally different. Well, I'm happy to have you here today. Happy you know, I'm happy. Here, I'm happy, happy to have you here today. And I wanted to. Um, I looked o- a little bit over your story. Yeah. You know, I saw. Um, you know what you did with Queens Flip. I, yeah. I, I, I love. I love Flip. Your Flip yeah. is. Your Flip is an amazing. I think that he's really amazing at what he does because yeah. it's like he does like most of the interviews that nobody else would ever do. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's always conversation from everywhere. Like one minute he has like all the top bloods, but then he will have. Um, Somebody who's not from that world at yeah, all, and then he'll have like a yeah, former yeah. basketball player. I yeah. think him and G Money do a great yeah, job. Yeah, shout out to G Money. G Money's from the same projects I'm from. What, what project are you from? Forty Projects, South 40. Jamaica. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, South Jamaica Houses. That's South, what, I've been in South Jamaica. Yeah, houses. that's what people want to say, but I'm from Forty, so I'm from Forty Projects. Absolutely. Yeah. South Jamaica Queens is one of the most confusing places I've ever been to. Well, you're not gonna tell me about the streets and stuff like that, right? What no, no, not okay. that. I mean, everybody uh, knows that y'all have the most confusing streets yeah, in New York. Nah, yeah. Well, I was just easy. 115th Road, no. 115th <laughs> Drive, 115th Avenue, right? <laughs> Brooklyn, you gotta know the the, the name and it's something is a else. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Manhattan is crazy too. Manhattan is on a grid. Toe. No, Manhattan is all everything in Manhattan is straight and across. Everything is tic-tac-toe. So eight like 
um, what they they call it Central Eighth Avenue is really Central Park West that turns into Eighth Avenue, Avenue, but they yeah. renamed it with Frederick Douglass Boulevard. But when yeah, I was right, a kid, right it was Eighth Ave, right. Seventh, right. Fifth, and then it goes to Madison and right. so on and so forth. But then you got to go from from Lower East Side, or you got to go from here, and you shoot over, and it's all names again, and you go back across. It. Well, like, that's downtown. It's all well, there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah Harlem and the Bronx. Well, the Bronx. I mean, I grew up in the Bronx. Bronx is pretty much the same. It's just a lot of hills. Yeah. Okay. It but the reason hills. why I said that. Uh, South Jamaica, Queens is a really confusing place for me is because it's like, and I, I haven't been there in a very long time, mm. but when I did go, um, there was like the projects right here. Yep. And then two blocks down is this beautiful house. Yeah, like that, absolutely. Like, like I'm yeah. like, yo, you know what? I want to get out yeah. of Harlem. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy right, my house like right, that, but it's right. two blocks away from the project. But but you know what? You know what's crazy, right? Because mm. um, when South Jamaica was when when black folks start first started migrating to South Jamaica, it was because of the homes and different things like that. Right. And then everybody who from the seventies and eighties who was hustling, even a lot of the Harlem dudes, they would get all the money, but they would always buy a house in Queens in South Jamaica or Long Island. You know what I'm saying? Right, they right. went out there for the girls. But we've always had that. So we have we have like if you will be in forty projects and then ten minutes later, you fifteen minutes later you could be in Jamaica States. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, yeah, right. I understand what you're saying, but it's just, it's just it's just a dope way that we have a synergy together. So tell me a little bit about, you know, for the people who may not know who Ruben yeah. Wells is. So I'm Ruben Wells. Um, I grew up in South Jamaica, Queens, uh, worked in the community all my life, um, was honored to be able to be elected in 2010 right. to the New York City Council. So I was okay. one of 51 people that ran the city. 52 of you count the mayor, right? Mm -hmm. Um and then in 2017, uh, uh, New York attorney Eric Schneiderman came after me and said that I stole money from a not-for-profit and from campaign finance. It was all BS. It's just the fact that they wanted me to do things that I wasn't going to do. Right. And um, uh, typically, there's this thing that um, there's this white privilege that permeates through criminal the criminal injustice system. So they have the badges and the guns. And if you don't do what they say, they try to railroad you, right? So they did that. Um, went to trial, knew I was going to win, lost, mm. was shocked, got sent upstate for two to six, uh, came home um, and beat it on reversal. Mm -hmm. Then won it at the appeals court. And then something has never happened before. I got a full dismissal. Wow. So, okay. Just going back a bit, because when I dug a little bit into, it, I was gonna ask you like, did this was this guy from like Forest Hills or something when you was from Southside? Because because it's like <laughs> it, it, it seemed really yeah. personal. Oh, it was personal. Like it was it was it, it was personal. very very personal, was personal how he pursued you. Oh well, it was personal. I mean, like he dragged me for like six years through the media. Um, it was it was personal, but it was because I knew, and I, I'm it's about to be something that's about to come out, mm -hmm. but. You know, you got to remember in 2018, he had to resign for beating up them four women, right? Mm. And he just now confessed to a certain crime towards that. But I knew about something that happened prior to that. Right. So he knew I knew about it. So I wanted to, because I, I wanted to ask some questions about like just politics in general. Yeah. You know, like I'm from, I was born and raised in the Bronx all the way up 228 between Carpenter and Lowry, up okay. that way. Yeah. And then um moved to Harlem uh in 96, you know, uh, at 12 years old, going on 13. And, you know, growing up in the hood, like a lot of people my age now, like they talk about how like these kids don't have this or that or third mm -hmm. to do. And a lot of times when I was younger, we didn't have much to do either. So right. like, we got into a lot of the same troubles. I think that right. your, your vantage point or your view kind of changes with your age. Right. So the reason why I wanted to ask about politics regarding what I'm saying is, um, a lot of people don't know anything about politics, but what right. I learned is is that local politics is what makes it, makes the changes more in the neighborhood as opposed to are uh, we voting for President Joe Biden or, or U.S. Donald Senate? Trump. Right. Yeah. So right. I, right. can you tell me, like, for somebody who doesn't know what a councilman actually right. does, could, with with that? So, so the city council actually is a legislative body for the city. The mayor would be the executive body or the uh, president, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what we do is we pass all of the laws that govern the city. So anything that can govern from you being able to uh, uh, fines or dump garbage on the street to the way your business operates, mm -hmm. we regulate that okay. by the legislation. We also are the ones who designate the budget. 
So there's a, like, I think this year is a $98 billion budget, which is totally ridiculous. But <laughs> that, $98 billion for what exactly? It's to run the city. Just to run the city. Yeah, it's to run the city. But it's because the mayor now, de Blasio, has just bloated the budget beyond control. Right. And it's not sustainable, right? So people don't understand it. But when they figure out, wait a minute, I got a ticket two years ago for st parking at a fire hydrant, which I shouldn't have did. It was $80. Why the hell is it $125 now? Because they keep bloating the budget and they got to pay for it. Right. These are regressive taxes. These are things that these 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 hidden taxes where they use it and it usually uh, comes after minority communities the most. Right. That's why we'll have the most speed cameras and different things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, 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 that's that's very interesting because I remember one time, <coughs> excuse me, I will never forget this. This was around like 2009. I was watching the news. I actually used to work at Pix11. Oh, okay. And But I worked in the mail room. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. I wasn't doing right. nothing. But important. you're still close to entertainment, still close to media and stuff. Well, I was in, I was in, in well, I was never in media. I was, mm -hmm. I was, um, I've been in entertainment since I was 18 years old. Like, I okay. started out uh, in the mail room, ironically, Again, uh, at 825 8th Avenue, which was the the home for um, Def Jam and Rockefeller, uh, and Jam, right. so a lot of a lot of guys, you, right. uh, of course, Murder Inc. You know what yeah, I mean? Like I was yeah. delivering mail to Murder Inc. in 2001. Okay, you know what I mean? So guys from your neighborhood, yeah, absolutely, Griff, was, coming, was through coming through there. Everybody, yeah, yeah. So that's how I actually got into mm -hmm. entertainment. But then eventually, like entertainment, you know, when you're a kid, you think that this is going to be forever, and it's not. Right. And I ended up back into the mailroom because that was the only skill I had, being mm -hmm. that I didn't have any high school education. You yeah. know, I didn't. I dropped out of high school. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I was um. What I was what I was gonna say is I remember in two thousand nine I had saw a report that the city made six hundred million dollars off of paid parking tickets. I can believe or it. Or something like that. Yeah. It was like this crazy Absolutely. I didn't think about what was paid. I was thinking about all the people I know who don't pay their parking tickets. Right, right. And yeah. So I didn't know that there was that much money half a billion, yeah. in the city. So like some of the, the the things, being that you're a councilman, some of the things that I wouldn't say bother me, but what I want to know, um, just for my own personal um uh, information is like I'm a I'm a, a very he heavy on my Second Amendment right, right. And I was able like pe a lot of people think that you're not able to uh, attain a firearm in New York City, which I was able to. You can, you absolutely. can, right. But the thing is, is that we have these laws that are like they they penalize the 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 gun owner, not the person who commits the crime. Absolutely. You know, because people who are committing crimes with firearms, they don't care if they get life or not. Right. The right? legal the legal gun owners are always the penalized. legal gunners right. is penalized. But I wanted to know like why is it that um I mean I'm I'm really happy that New York doesn't have Florida's gun leniency or laws because it would really be horrible out here. Yeah, they getting ready to have it, so and you don't even have to have a license. You can just, right. just walk around with a gun out. That's right, which, that's gonna be crazy. That's crazy. Right. But what I wanted to know is why is like New York City so reluctant on the um? It's it's like a reactive law. It's not a proactive law. Why 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 is somebody able to go out and get a a, a um? And these are I'm comparing apples and oranges. Why is a person able to go out and get a a, a driver's license where they could potentially injure somebody driving, yeah, right? Like driving but, into a crowd of people. Right, but yeah. for a person like me who I got my gun license in 2008 in New York City, mm -hmm. years later, I still can't legally carry a firearm. The difference is uh, New York because of the density, mm -hmm. New York because of the fast pace, the stress-induced environment mm -hmm. that there's no other place like this on earth, right? So you, that's why most people when they leave here, they go, oh my God, I'm so relaxed, I'm so comfortable. When they come back, if they drive, as soon as they cross the bridge, they're like, oh, I'm back in New York, right? <laughs> right. Um, and the difference is the fact that if you have a car and you make a decision to, very few people make an intentional decision because it's a decision and it's an intentional decision. Right. Very few people make an intentional decision to uh, take a car and ram it into a group of people, right? Right. Um, they may go and drive drunk and hurt somebody. Right. But you will have people that make intentional decisions to pull out a gun and shoot somebody. Right. And the odds of that happening and the odds of innocent bystanders being hurt and killed, because when you drive, you have to go to DMV, you have to do certain things. Right. They're not, we're just not going to have gun training for everybody in New York City. Right. Yeah, that's right? not And you hit the nail on the head. Those who are going to do an illegal act carry a gun no matter what yeah right. and they and if they have to use it they're going to use it but i'm finding a lot of guys that are actually carrying them don't really want to use them you know right. they're being reactive because of they feel like they have to be part of a, a subculture of this gangsterism and things like that but 
Um, that's why, and there's no way in the world, we don't have 8 million people in New York City. That's a nonsense. We have more like 9.7 million people in New York City. Right. So if you, could you imagine 200,000 people running around with, with no, be cal 40 calibers? Damn. You understand what I'm saying? No, it, it'd be yeah, crazy. Yeah, it'd be crazy. So there's no way in the world we could allow that. Yeah. I, I just think that, like, you know, I mean, because I can't, you, you're right. You can't compare New York City to any other city on the planet. No way in the planet. And I always say that, like, um, if, I mean, in my own world, right, mm -hmm. there would be, because I, I actually got my firearm license not just to have a gun. I was trying to become an armored truck guard. Because, okay. I had, like I said, I dropped out of school. So there right. wasn't like many avenues for me to take to get a job. Mm -hmm. where I, and I got three kids for me to have like a well-paying job. But I was right. like, shit, I can get into uh, armored security and, and I can make, security, a, make a living. Executive security. Absolutely. Right. But then I found out it was such a political. Um, that's a, a very political industry where they only hire. They don't have gun custodians mm -hmm. um, at their facilities. So yeah. like. You can only get the license where you can carry at all time unless you're former law enforcement. Former law enforcement. But a lot of like a good guy letter. Exactly. Right. A lot of uh, you know, average New New Yorkers don't know that. Right. But that's sidebar. I wanted to know, um, take me back to the time where you lost trial. Yeah, that was crazy. We blew trial in twenty seventeen, July. Um but like, we kind of knew what was happening. Um, I had a lot of uh, strong dudes that was down there with me. I had the whole community with me, right? Right. So there wasn't a day where the entire back of the courtroom or outside the hallways was packed with people from South Jamaica. Right. And we all honestly believed. Like, I knew God put you through a process, but I didn't know what this was about. But we, I thought I was coming out of this clean, mm -hmm. right? I was like, this is nonsense. Because um, you felt you hadn't done anything wrong. Didn't do anything wrong. And, and, and the money that they were talking about... And I'm, I'm I'm just being honest. They were talking about thirty two thousand dollars. This dude spent almost a million dollars or a little bit more than a million dollars investigating me. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, but is that just playing with the house money just to see? Yeah, if that's all it was. He yeah. was he was using the money, you know, free taxpayer money to come after me. But he was doing it for political reasons. Like he actually put in a commercial, a million dollar ad buy with me in the commercial before. He even prosecuted me. <laughs> Word wow. up. I mean, like he saw me, showed me, perp walked me and everything. Like this was all political. Um, you remember, it, do you remember when you saw that commercial? You know what? I saw the commercial one day because a bunch of my colleagues, and these are people from different parts of the state which were calling me. My phone was blowing up. So I was like, what the fuck? What's now going to happen, right? Right. And I was like, yo, this, this guy got a commercial on you? And I'm like, a commercial? What are you talking about? So I'm flipping through the TV. I couldn't find it. And then somebody said, yo, flip it to this channel. Boom. And it was a commercial on me. So I called my attorneys and they was like, no, nah, you somebody saw that wrong. I said, I just saw it. He's like, he can't do that. It's, it's, it's unethical. It's against the law. Mm. He did it. All right. So, um, you know, we pressed them. We sent a letter to the um, to the grievance committee for the attorneys, which he just had a cop to. Um, and we, um, we got him to pull it down. And he gave some ridiculous excuse. He pulled it down out of an abundance of caution. Now, you know what he was doing. Mm. He was trying to poison the jury pool. And at the same time, he was running for re-election. So he wanted to try to score points. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and if you, I don't know if you remember, but Black Lives Matter last year had a protest. And there were two people that stood outside their houses with guns. Yeah, and was aiming that. at Yes. Yeah. Uh, wow, so, that's funny. That gentleman actually comes here every once in a while. Really? Yes, to okay. record. Yes. Wow. So the guy, um, so the district attorney or our version of the district attorney was going after them, mm -hmm. right? And she had just went after the governor. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court for that state just ruled that she had to be removed from the case because she was sending out campaign literature on convicting them. Mm. Wow. You can't do that, right? That's illegal. Mm -hmm. So they removed her from the case and had to place a special prosecutor. She tried to get back on it. And she's a sister, but she just shouldn't have did it. So I'm saying is this dude did it to me and it was okay. You know what I'm saying? And that, so these are the things that were going on. I have such a problem. Well, it, and typic, it's typical for me to say like I have a problem with the judicial system, right? Because like everybody does. But like my problem with the judicial system is like I feel like most of the laws that are in place, they're very old laws, right? Yeah, they're, okay. They're hundreds of years old. Yep. And when these laws were written, written, they were to protect white men. Absolutely. Right. Even the child support wasn't made like they're using it now to kill us. Right. It was made to, to, to come after some white folks that were really wealthy and they were just leaving the kids and bastardizing the kids and the mm, family right. and leaving them destitute. So then they learned that they can use it to separate our people with it. So, yeah. And <clears throat> excuse me, my, my, my problem is, is like I'm very big on words. Right. And it's like Supreme Court, Supreme Court judge. It's like 
it, it's almost like I, I watch Joe Rogan a lot, and he says about like the Pope, right? And he yeah. he, he would say it's things Joe about Rogan. the Pope, like yeah, like yeah. he'd say things about the Pope, like yo, like so this guy, like he's like nobody thinks it's weird to like go talk to this guy in this little room, and like I'm, I don't try to disrespect anybody's mm, faith or religion, right. but like to talk and confess, like all of these sexual feelings that you have to a guy because he wears a certain outfit, like right. he wears a, a weird like wizardry right. looking hat, right, right. and w what I feel about um like of course like with school and education system, which is a business within itself. Mm -hmm. Like it's all of these things and barriers put in place to hold people in certain places. Like I feel like, you know, the judicial system is specifically and strictly held by power. Right. Like it's just a, it's a power thing because like when we start talking about like, like just your, your uh, situation for instance, right? Okay. You had everything saying that you didn't do it. Right. And, but they but they tried to have all these little technical ways of you saying, right. oh, the money, like I pay that to go. I, I remember I was seeing it on Queen's Flip. You were saying something about like having to pay for, for something that you needed done. And they tried to take it as, oh, he has this money. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, but, but it's yeah. like, but, but and that's why I asked was like the, the guy who, what, what's his name that went after you? Snyderman. Snyderman. Yeah. Was it was it like personally motivated? Like what 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 makes a person go that hard to go after a person that's only doing good in a community? Uh, um sometimes people's sanity outruns their vanity. So mm. their personal ambitions is the only thing that they can see. So you have to remember this is the same guy who was in the state senate mm -hmm. who went after another senator because he had an issue with um allegedly striking or beating up his girlfriend, right? Yeah. The guy did a bench trial, <laughs> got convicted of a misdemeanor. This guy, Snyderman, convinced the Senate to have a special tribunal so that they can expel this senator out of the um, out of out of the Senate, which I still believe is unconstitutional, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can only be expelled with a felony. This guy did that, but at the same time, he's running around smacking women and making them do stuff, calling them brown slaves, and telling them, you know, this is all documented. Telling Damn. them, you know, uh, I'm the I'm the law of the land. What are you going to do? Who are you going to call against me, right? But you went after this guy for that. Mm. So I mean, it, it, it's it's all a, a point of what people. And their ambitions and what they shape in their own mind, and they think that they should be able to get away with it's privilege. So as the like as the people like the ones who are like voting for like who are we to trust? You know what I'm saying? Because mm. that that's what my, my biggest problem is like you know every time it's an election, a large election, right? It's always like oh I don't we picking the the, the 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 famous quote picking the one of the lesser two evils. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's how we get tricked. We always got to go with the lesser of the two mm -hmm. evils, the small, the devil you know against the devil you don't know. Right. That's all BS. But it's like, even like, so growing up on the east side, like I saw Charles Rangel a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Charles, I, yeah. I was going to school and he was at the train station shaking people's hands right, and all right, of that. Right, right, Charles. And like, of course, it's like you you, you definitely want to see people that you can identify yourself right, with or right. see people in your neighborhood. But is there some, some change that needs to come as far as the due diligence of how we pick they, not just the council members, but more local government? Yeah, because it's the city council, it's a state assembly, it's a state uh, senate, and you have to read between the lines. You know, you can't keep allowing people to lie to us by either omission or the way that they change their wordplay, mm -hmm. right? So, like, right now, we have a campaign, and the opponent is saying that she brought more money in history than anybody else to... Um, but what she's not telling you is... The money that she negotiated is citywide money and borough-wide money. Very little of that money came to the district. But people will look at it and go, oh, my God, she brought in $307 million. That's a lie. She didn't bring that in. That's not, that's not going to affect you. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, then they'll, like, they tried to uh, make a comment about me being absent from the district for 69 times. I was absent because I had a medical reason. I had five operations in a year and a half. Damn. You understand what I'm saying? This is prior to you this being- This is prior to that happening, right? So I was dealing with that and going to trial, but I was still bringing the money home and doing everything I needed to do in the district. So they use these little things, but our people have got to start to take the time to read. The same amount of time that you take for whatever you're interested in, whether it be the sneaker culture, whether it be your music, whether even if you just got to work two jobs, a nine to five and a, and a six to whatever to survive, if you're going to vote, you should be informed on who you're voting for. So who, so when it comes to, like, I'm glad you said that, because when it comes to the voting, right, I think about youth, right? Because right. that's the biggest thing everybody goes after. Right. Oh, we need the young vote. We need the young kids. They don't I, vote, though. They don't vote, but mm -hmm. I think it's... Um, see, when I was told, told to vote when I was a kid, mm. my mother made me do it. Like, right. my mom was like, this is what you need to do. Mm. This is what you need to do. We have to do this because of this, right? right? And then 
it wasn't until I think Barack Obama got elected mm -hmm. and then after he got elected I said I started feeling like it didn't matter who was in office mm -hmm. only because I never seen my mom have a smooth year Right, right. I never, right. I, I never seen, and not that she just deserves a smooth year, just cause. No, my, yeah, my, my she, yeah, she should have a smooth year. Why not? Right. You can say that. Fuck it. Um, yeah. cool. Can I say that? That you absolutely, can. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. yeah fuck why, it. why shouldn't our mothers and fathers have smooth years? Right. right. Yeah. Why should our mothers be the only ones that have to work nine to fives and six to twos or whatever and go through it seven days a week like that? No, she deserves a smooth but, year. But, but, she with deserves that being a smooth ten years. Absolutely. But so what I'm saying with that is, is that when I look at when I think about the youth, right, I feel like, okay. The youth isn't conditioned to learn. Like, I know that you said, like, for them to just like read, but like, yeah. learning, learning is different than it ever was. Absolutely, especially with social media, tech. Yeah. Super. Like for for myself, I'm like an anomaly. Like, I, I dropped out of high school in the ninth grade. One of the worst decisions I ever made in my life. Um, am I academically educated? No. Am I educated? Yes. I right. took time to educate myself, but right. I also came, I was raised by a lot of women that was very smart. Mm. So they was like, you got to do something with yourself. And it made me strive for more for, you know, once I became a man, et cetera. Right. I'm talking about like for the young, the youth out there that like, they might not have the same access. So they, not just the access, but they might not have the people that can educate them fluently. Like, you know, right. it's kids in the hood that's dealing with a lot of shit. And I, I'm, I'm only speaking for the kids in the hood because I was a kid in the hood. Right. So it's like, I'm like, how do we get through to them? Because what I hate to see is a campaign that's like, like, don't go use whatever's the newest song on the radio. Like, don't right, go use right. Little Baby. Don't yeah, go yeah, use Little yeah. Baby We Paid and have, you know, whoever, like, have you speak over it. Like, right, that's not, right, a, right, a kid right. gonna be like, what the fuck is that? Like, just play the song. Like, I don't want to hear that. Like, right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, they yeah, don't want yeah, the yeah. remix. They want right. the original. So my thing is, is this is like, what can be done? But if I say it, it's kind of hot. If I speak over it, they want to hear that. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you coming from a different place also. Yeah. Like, you know, that what I like about, what I, what I like about what it is that you're that what you're doing is is that you know you're from Forty Projects. You Absolutely. know what I mean? You can still walk there and see that. I'm be there tonight from four to eight. We got an event. Okay, yeah, so like you, people can see that, right? Mm -hmm. But it, but there's there's also um, there's also other kids that like in in different neighborhoods. We might not have the person like. We all think that everybody's crooked. You know, when you're young and black, yeah, everybody's absolutely. crooked to us. Absolutely. So it's like that's what I'm saying. It's like how can we educate or or build more programs? To where the education is not what it used to be, because that education of how it used to be is not what it is anymore today. Right, and um, to tell you the truth, it's not that the educational system is behind. The educational system is designed to intentionally be behind. Mm. Right. So one of the things we did was we designed my entire district so that all of my um, young people in my schools had interconnectivity. So if you went to two two six and you went to I seventy two. You can go up on the small boards and pipe right into the schools. Okay. Right? And I wanted to do like that so that these kids can have like an electronic passport because we have one of the largest South Asian and Caribbean populations in the state. So my thing was everybody has to mix and blend together. So why not have the kids here be able to throw up on the screen India or be able to throw up on the screen uh, Bangladesh or be able to throw up on the screen Guyana or Trinidad so that the kids that are here that are regular American blacks would be able to say, oh, that culture's kind of dope and be able to appreciate each other and I celebrate each other, right? But that's, now that was done back in 20, I want to say 14 or something like mm -hmm. that. That should have been reproduced or replicated throughout the state. They didn't do it. One, because it came from a black district, right? And they wanted to take credit for it. So they didn't want that to be spread. Can I ask you a question? Why is it, why is like, and I, I don't know, it, it seems like nobody says the word black anymore. They're scared. Everybody's scared. Everybody has to, has to, you have to be, uh, everything has to be, quant uh, it has to generate a complete fairness or uh, e equity even in your vocabulary all the way across the board. I don't understand why. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't live by that code, so that's not something that I. I myself, I found like, like my own battles feeling sometimes being black don't even feel like being American. Like what, whatever right. people say, yeah, like what, what certain people say, what they feel as be like. Cause I watch a lot of TV. Right. I was raised by TV, but like just watching, like when people talk about the flag and how the right. flag makes them feel when they see an eagle in the sky. I'm like, I ain't never right. felt that shit ever in my life. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. So, you know what? I, I I remember having those kinds of feelings, but then I remember, and I'm not saying let's not let's not get it twisted. What I'm about to say, the U.S. has done some really really corrupt stuff in other countries and overseas to protect U.S. interests. But 
the reason why people flock here, nobody's fleeing the U.S. Right. Everybody flees to the U.S. Yeah. because it is the greatest country on earth. You understand what I'm saying? As right. far as even though they have, they're oppressive and even though it's racist, it still has opportunities that you're not going to receive anywhere else. You're not going to have to worry about doing a protest here and having dissidents locked up under the jail for 20 years and having everybody just start disappearing from their homes, you know, like these squads come in and do it. So in that manner, I've learned to appreciate the United States and where we're at. So how, like, um, I wanted to get into, like, you know, the whole thing, because you went to prison. Yeah, two years. Yeah, state. You did, wait, you I ain't go to Fed. State. state. I ain't go to Fed. Where, 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 where were you at? Shoot, I was in, um, where wasn't I at? They had me in seven different facilities. They had me in um, downstate. Oh, that's my brother, Ball. Okay. We, you need the security. Y'all let him in there like that. Y'all need better security, bro. Nah, we, we, yeah. we're fine. We yeah, just, you're fine. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so um, they had me in uh, downstate because when I first got remanded, they put me in a wheelchair for eight months on Rikers. Yeah. So um, I was. they didn't even give me medical treatment. So I was, I was moved. They was carrying me on gurneys back and forth in different buildings on Rikers for like four or five days. And then uh, seven days or something like that. And then my people got involved. De Blasio started getting some bad press. So they took me to the medical building where the judge told them to take me to in the first place. Mm-hmm. I could walk when I got remanded. Right. Um, and then once they came in and they got me into the medical building, he wanted me out of there. So they sent me to Downstate, which is a maximum security reception center. Mm-hmm. And they run it like a supermax. Right, right, right. right. Um, then from there, they sent me to um, Marcy which is a cut factory. Yeah, like, there's certain places you don't want to go. You don't want to go to Green. You don't want to go to Marcy. I've had a lot of friends go to Green. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't want to go to Green, bro. And these are medium. I mean, these I don't want to go to places. No, absolutely. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you, say it, you don't want to go there. You don't want to go Franklin, and you don't right. want to go to Bear Hill, right? Mm-hmm. So they sent me there. Um, then I had to go through medium um, reception, which is uh, what's that dirt farm? Let's start with a C. It's the worst place in the world. Um, I forget what that I'm was. Stuck. No, no, Comstack is mad. no. This is um, what's this? The the reception, medium reception. I hate that place. No, not downstate. The medium one it starts with a C. Anyway, it's in my essay. Right. It's the worst place in the world. Um, uh, I was in Sing Sing, I was in Wallkill, and I was in Lincoln and work release before they closed it down. You don't hear a councilman say some shit like this. Like what? Like just to, like I mean, you have a different experience. Yeah, like you have yeah. a different. I've never. Ever, I mean, you're the first councilman I've ever sat with in my life. Yeah. But <laughs> right, right, right. I would never, like, this is the shit that I hear, like, my homies. So, right. You get right, what I'm saying? So right. it's like, my, my perspective that you're giving me saying this, I'm like, damn. So you can, you can, you, you came from where you come from was, was not an easy place nah, to grow up in. Nah, uh-uh. Then getting through that, you did what you was perceived as right mm-hmm. and still ended up behind bars. So yeah. w- what I wanted to know is, like, could you take me through the process of like exoneration? Yeah, but let me. There's well, two things. It's, it's there's two things that, you just. No, there's two things you just said that was uh, that par, that probably right into it, right? Mm-hmm. One of the things was um, when you had said that uh, the experiences and the different things we they, they take us through. I wrote a essay. Mm-hmm. And it's a five part essay. It's called the New York State criminal injustice system versus you might have to edit this out the nigga council member reuben wills no we're keeping that right and the reason why i did that is because you can take new york state out of it and you can take the councilman out of it reuben wills but it'll still be the criminal injustice system versus the nigga Mm. because no matter and i'm not glorifying that but i'm saying is to use it as the base racist term that it is that's how they see us no matter what we are. Right. Right. I was one of 51 that controlled the city, but they saw me as that. The media treatment was racist. They saw me as that because that's what they see us as on a regular basis. Right. And then the second thing was when I was in mid state, I mean, when I was in, I went to mid state too. When I was in down state, um, you know, they shave all your hair off. Now I was 255. Um, I had lost like 30 pounds in like maybe a month. Right. Um, no, a little more than that. Um, so I was a little frail looking. You know, I'm having anxiety attacks, depression, um, and I'm in a wheelchair. So my cousin came up to see me. And, uh, you know, they brought me out on the floor, but they had to keep me separated um, um, in a different section. 
And when I'm out on the floor, I'm like, yo, I don't. I told my family not to come see me for the whole two years. Yeah. Right. I don't want nobody to see me. And um, I'm out on the floor and I'm sitting there and I like I couldn't hold it in. So my cousin was like, I'm gonna tell you something that I know the way you think is gonna think you're gonna think it's effed up, but you're gonna be all right because you was bred for this. Mm. He said, people that come from where we come from, they design it like that. So when we get here, we know how to handle this. Right. And that just took me to a different place because I'm saying, this is my cousin who like I was raised up on. He's like the mayor of the projects, right? Yeah. Um, and he's sitting here telling me that I'm going to be all right. First, he said, because the who you are, no matter, they can drop you anywhere on God's earth and you're going to make it, right? Right. But you were bred for this. You come from South Jamaica. You right, come, right. There's, there's eight neighborhoods in Brooklyn, Bronx, Harlem. We come from certain places where they, it's like a mill. It's like a factory that they produce us, and they produce us for the prison industrial complex. Right. So when you said those two things, that's that it just parlays directly into it because that's what it is. Yo, I, wow. I had I, I went to a when I dropped out of high school, I went to an alternative high school, and they had like cl- the classroom is a little bit bigger than this room, mm-hmm. and they had like this uh this guidance counselor that came in like once a month mm-hmm. checking on us. Right. And. Like when I I'm this was when I was sixteen. Now that I think about it, I'm like, yo, this lady left me crying. <laughs> like for real. But yeah. I, but it I all I just told her was like regular shit. Like like what you saying being bred for. Right. Like she asked me where did I where did I see myself at twenty one? I was like, I'm not gonna make it to twenty one. Right. Well I'm not I don't even how am I do something I don't think I'm gonna be alive at twenty one. The reason why I felt that way though was because it was like a young girl that, you know, we all played outside together and all of that and she had just got murdered, like maybe <laughs> Two weeks before that counselor came in. Mm. And then it's like, you know, just dealing with the police. Like, I remember when I was a little, little kid. I was like eight years old. No, five years old. I wanted to be a cop because I'm watching Police Academy. I'm right, watching Chips right, and all right, of that. And right. you think a badge and a gun and Dirty right, Harry. Right. And um, then I seen a cop do something in front of me to my god brother that like really opened my eyes. You know, he um put something in my god brother's pocket and pulled it out. And when he looked at me, when I saw him, he winked at me mm. and he proceeded to beat my god brother up. And, you know, I, I, I back what I was basically getting at is like when you said what you're bred for, I really thought that I had like all of these things in my future. Like I thought that prison was going to be a part of my life. I Absolutely. thought that me taking another person's life had to be a part of my right. life. I thought that like in order for me to be a man where I was from, that I had to do these certain things. And right. it's just like hearing that and me telling you what I'm I've went through it's just heartbreaking for me for the youth because I'll be I'll be like damn like a lot of them don't got a shot yeah it's called the construction of a thug it's it's, it's literally a step by step practice on how they construct uh, the image of us being thugs you'll see um images of extremely large black men next to really small little women or something like that, so it looks intimidating. You'll see us in um, grimacing poses with the faces and different things like that. You'll see the media examples. That's why, I mean, I know everybody's had this experience where you see somebody shooting or there's somebody that shot up something and on the news, but they don't show the picture, and you go, that must have been a white person. Because they don't show the picture right away. Right. Right? But if it was a black person, they got the picture up there, they got Facebook pictures with them doing stuff, they could have just been at a party enjoying stuff, but they picked the worst looking pictures, they put them up immediately, and they put their record up. Right. When they start talking about, oh, it's a mental health issue, you know it wasn't a black person, right? Because it's a construction. This is what they do to make sure that the rest of us are either kept in our place or they're going to put us in certain places. But I mean, so how do we, how, but, so how do we in strengthen that conversation? I mean, I shout out to my brother Charlemagne, the guy. Like he he always talks a lot about mental health, but Absolutely. my thing is this: is like I had a lot of mental health issues when I was a kid, and I didn't know that there was mental health issues. Right? You know, like going me coming outside and seeing certain shit happen in front of my building, yeah. and just going to school the it's next trauma. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't even know what the word like. I'm 38. I didn't know what the word trauma meant until I was like right. 33. 38? Yeah, oh, I'd be shit. 39. I, I, I thought you was like 33, right? Now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nah, man. Okay. When I was like when I was 33 is when I really found out what trauma was. Like right. I didn't know these things. Right. So I'm just trying to figure like. As a councilman, does that even go into the budgeting? Does that Absolutely. go into the plan? Yeah, Department of Mental Health and Hygiene, we have um, 
There's a whole department that deals with mental health. Uh, they had the whole thing that was a scandal uh, for the last two years with the Thrive NYC, the billion dollars, nobody knows where it's at, but that was supposed to be for mental health services. Right. And it's now starting to become part of the conversation with NYPD responding to people who have a mental health crises and things like that. But this is trauma that we've had, that our parents have had, never knew how to deal with. They gave it to us, we got it from our community and stuff like that. That's what makes us so resilient, but at the same time, you know, you build up these these chemicals inside of you that can trip you any time. And this is not something that a normal person should be able to live under. Right. I mean, my, my, my path that I've been going on, you know, for, for a long time now is like trying to get a lot of people to understand that like a lot of shit that's in the hood, like what we what's normal for us every day is not normal. No, and it shouldn't be normalized. Right. They they allowed it to be normal. They allow it to be normal. Absolutely. Like and and the whole taboo about us getting mental health services. Like Dr. Jeff Gordier is my shrink. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I'm not going to ever go anywhere and say, uh, Kepra, she's a wellness person that deals with me. Anne Marie Thompson, these are people that I call on a daily basis to get services. You understand right. what I'm saying? Because you have to make sure that you remain balanced. You can't you can't see, but you can't see one person get shot and not have trauma. So imagine when you going through and you you actually look back at your life and you go, I got 16 people that I I, I grew up with and was all murdered. Man, you understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. I was I was 11 or 14 years old. I was sitting outside my house because we had moved. My parents had moved to St. Albans, mm -hmm. and they had a, a guy that they were looking for in Hollis that was a drug dealer. Two FBI agents. Came up, it was a big story because somebody shot through the window and killed his mother holding a baby. And they were supposed to have lived a couple of blocks down from me. Mm -hmm. Two FBI agents, I'm 11 or 14, sitting outside reading comic books, 11. Yeah. And two FBI agents came out and put the guns to us, me and my friend. But we didn't know anybody. We jumped up, I ran and banged on the door. My mother came out and put a shield out and said, y'all better shield, um, achieve, your, achieve your weapons. Mm -hmm. like, why would y'all put, had guns out to us? Right. That's trauma. No kid should ever have to go through yeah. that like that. I, you know what? And, and uh, thinking about that, like I've, I've had, uh, like the whole stop and frisk thing. Like, hmm. man, it got to a point where I thought that that's that's what they supposed to do. Right. So like, it, it, like when you first deal with it, you get a little antsy. Then it's like, like I I got into a uh, um, a situation with the police, and I heard you say it on Queen's Club of ACD, right? I, I had yeah. the, the, the the judge gave me that, but like after that. Because I had to go through that whole tri process of of dealing with that cop, I just started complying with the stop and frisk shit because yeah. I'm like, I, I want to go home. You know what I mean? So I thought that they were supposed to do that. I didn't know that right. that was a violation, but I've been, right. I've grown up. I can't tell you how many times I've been violated as a young man. That That's called compliance with resentment. And they teach you that upstate. We know you don't want to comply. We know we dead wrong, but you're going to comply and you can resent it. But that's an actual psychological term that they build into you. Compliance with resentment. Damn. And and as far as stop, question, and frisk, like I got to really shout out Jamani Williams, um, who's our public advocate. And um, Brad Lander, he was one of the city council people who was one of the lead authors for the Community Safety Act that ended the stop, question, and frisk in New York City being used unconstitutionally in racism, um, race, uh, in a racist way. And I was actually the 34th vote that made it veto proof because Bloomberg said he was going to veto it. So we was able to get that over. So I got to But that's that what, that was it. such a big thing. Because I remember um, de Blasio had this campaign because yeah. he has this black family, right? right. So he had this campaign right. and it was like his his son was like, I mean, I didn't know he had a black family, right? right? I didn't right. know his wife was black. Right. But when I seen his son, they was they like him and his wife was like, yeah, you know, I would tell my son to do it. I'm like, yo, your son is not going to go through the same shit no, that- not. He, his son was was raised as a child of a city council member, right. then the public advocate, then the mayor. Stop right. it. And he Let's looks like Clay it. Thompson with Afro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. just, no, just keeping it all like the way 100. Clay Thompson. No, he does. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but I, I'm just keeping it 100. And, and that's the thing. It's like, I feel like, see, that term politically correct. Right. I feel like I'm not politically correct in the in the, in the the fashion of like talking about these types of things because I'm not a politician. But at the right. same time, it's like, the stuff that happens in New York, I'm born and raised here, right. but the stuff that happens here, when you hear a person that has never gone through, mm. I mean, like never seen a scratch of what I went through by the time I was 15, right. and I'm not talking about amongst my peers, I'm right. talking about with like the city, the the the, the policing, right. the the uh, the garbage man, right. goddamn, like the train, like right. you like right. all of these different things add to like me and me and uh my producer, we was having this conversation one day about like I went to Orlando 
And the people that were so nice mm. actually got a little bit offended about how New York was. Right. Because right, they're right. so nice here. Like they they were so nice there. I'm like, damn, like my whole day is different based on like how a person right. treats me. Right. And I'm just like if New York is the greatest place on the planet and it's supposed to be the greatest city on earth. Right. And I just want to see more shit that happens to change the city to push it in the right direction because Excuse me. While I do have enough money to live somewhere else, it's right. a lot of people who don't. Right. I still got aunts over here and cousins over there and sisters and brothers and stuff. And I, I just want to see the best for the city no matter what. But that's where it starts. When you was talking about how do we get these young people to do it. First, we have to teach them in the way that they are used to learning. But then it's what we teach them. And that's right. what it is. It's not all about you. It's about your shared experience. Right. So. I can't, I was bitter when I came home. I was mad as hell. Right. But I can't, I was taught and through prayer and meditation, I learned that I can't be angry and do this for myself. Right. This is something that God put me through a process to make sure that I can take that and change for other people. Right. So the same way you feel like, nah, I want my aunts and my cousins and everybody else to live the same quality of life that I'm living, you know, just because I can leave don't mean they can. Right. That's how we should, that's how we have to begin to teach everybody else that they have to start to learn. Like, listen, just because you get a come up or you get a lick don't mean you don't go back and help everybody right, else. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Well, Ru, man, I'm man. Yo, we out of time. But I, oh man, okay, that was good. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I, 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 I wish we get we we should have more time. But I, but yeah. honestly, like you know, we we connect. Like I said, we connected to through a family member. Absolutely. You no, know? and absolutely. and I would love to do more work with you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm looking forward to building, Same. With, building more. We come, you coming you. out there with the chef thing or what? Like, yeah, you just gotta let me know when it is, you man. Know I mean, I'm, know I'm it dead is. serious. Like, I mean, let, let me know how long we need to do. If there's anything that could bring a community together, it's food. It's, it's food, food, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm absolutely. Just telling you, we got some of the best. I brought you the food from the door. We got the best food out. Well, thank you, brother. I appreciate having you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.